Hi everyone, in this session we will take a look at Pega learning path. If you are a fresher and you would like to start your career on Pega technology, then you are at the right place. The key takeaways of this session is you will understand what is the career path that is defined in Pega. And also I will share some of my learning experiences while moving from an entry level system architect to a Pega lead system architect. So broadly within Pega, we have three roles which are known as system architect, senior system architect and lead system architect. These are the well-defined roles. If you want to take a look at more information or read more about it, I strongly recommend you to visit Pega PDN website. Okay. Also, I can give you the description in my video. You can also take a look at that. But if you really have a short time and you would like to get the gist of it, what it takes to start from a system architect and then eventually become a lead system architect, then this video can help you get up to the speed with that. Okay. So, as a fresher, whenever someone has to start with Pega technology, then they will be starting their career with a system architect. After system architect, with a considerable amount of experience, they become senior system architect. This is like you can say senior developer where all the hands-on design, solutioning, all the skills that are needed for a particular developer in Pega will be attained. Also, as a bonus, some of the SSAs will have the proficiency to help other system architects or slowly they will adapt their skill to groom some of the system architects so they become leaders and eventually they become tech leads and finally to lead system architects okay before going about system architects or senior system architects or lead system architects i would like to give my view you won't find this on pdn you might seem jumping directly from sa to ssa to lsa is quite straightforward and happens over a period of time Maybe people may think, hey, I will become an SA system architect this year, next year, senior system architect, and then to the lead system architect. I can finish this journey in three years. Okay, you may think like that. I won't say no, but that is too unrealistic. However, in reality, how this happens or how organizations define this, it's not a standard, but from my experience, I'm just giving you a steps which can help you to move from system architect to a lead system architect. Okay, again, these mini steps are from my experience, this you won't find in any of the PDN or any other places. Okay, whenever we interview someone and we take someone with, you know, a fresh knowledge and they don't ha have any hands on on Pega, then any companies would recruit them as entry level system architects. So what entry level system architect knows is probably may not be uh, on Pega, some of the entry-level essays may not know anything on Pega, like companies hire entry-level essays to train them on Pega technology to cover the course, which is called Pega System Architect. Once they cover the course, we recommend them to take this certification. Is it mandatory to have a System Architect CSA certification, Certified System Architect certification to do the System Architect? I will say it's not mandatory, but it would be beneficial for your career path as soon as you cover the course, even if you know only the theory, practice the modules mentioned on the theory, the courses, and then you will be able to clear the certified system architect. Also in a PDN, Pega PDN, that's a developer network, Pega developer network, where your record will be maintained and that will be useful when someone is verifying your background with respect to Pega. Example, I have given my certified system architect way back in 2000, 13. So that, that helps me. So whenever someone would like to verify my credentials, they can check and it will give them an information on which, on which version I have given the certification. So that is exactly, you can say, uh, the time when I have started in Pega. So that applies to everyone. So as an entry level system architect, it's always good to cover the course of system architect, which is coming from Pega and then get certified and slowly start getting hands-on onto the application, like if your customer is building some applications for banking, or maybe let's say a loan application or something else, then you start your, your hands-on experience on that application. And whatever changes you make, of course, you just know the theory and you just have a little hands-on, that is a practice coming out of this session, that's fine. You will have the complete guidance from your senior system architects and lead system architects, and you'll start as a mid, <clears throat> that means as soon as you start implementing, we can consider you as mid-level system architect. 
Once you start implementing, you get hands-on and you get thorough with the concepts, modules. Slowly, you'll start with case management in Pega, let's say, and some of the core engine concepts, maybe declaratives, data pages. Like, likewise, you will have so many modules in Pega. Once you master some of them, and you're able to go in, in depth, probably you're not taking too much help from the SSAs involved to implement your user stories or your functionalities. It might be a simple configuration or maybe a complex task. You're able to execute on your own once the design is provided by SSAs. Then you can still be treated as high-end SSAs, high-end system architects. Okay, and uh, as to, there will be thin line between the high-end system architect and senior system architect. But I'll just tell you one, one shot or one simple difference over here. I've seen people with, with one year experience or two year experience or three year experience as working as system architects who will be very good enough, who will be thorough with the product capabilities. Like they are so serious about understanding each and every detail of the product and what they're implementing for the customer who takes care of all of the stuff with minimal intervention from the senior system architects. Those are exceptional. So as soon as a system architect becomes exceptional and they're able to do quite well in their tasks, then they get to a level of entry level senior system architect. That means they're qualified to become a senior system architect. Within companies, they have their own mechanism to promote people to move from high-end system architect to a senior system architect, entry level. Of course, normally in the market, what, what is considered is if you cover the Pegapedian course of senior system architect, SSA course, and you become certified, then that is a prerequisite to become a senior system architect. Again, certifications are not mandatory. We have seen people who do not hold the certification, but still they're doing quite well as in the role as senior system architect. Okay. But again, my recommendation is always whenever you're going to the role, cover the course with a hands-on and then become certified. And then it goes on to your learning path i mean even if someone verifies your role then it matches some of the customers usually they verify if you are holding the right certifications with respect to your role and it helps you there so and these are quite easy if you're following if you would have followed the step-by-step -step improvement in system architect then clearing the senior system architect because you have a hands-on on all of the modules covering the course and giving the certification will become very easy for you Always you will be giving, you will be covering the course within the latest version of Pega and then you will be attempting the certification in the latest version. Okay. As of now, in this video, I can say today, as of today, Pega 8.8 .8 is the latest version that is available on Pega. And you find on Pega period, you will see which versions are available for this certification. You can cover the course and you can give this certification. Example, if you're at the level of SSA. Or if you're at the level of system architect, then you would be covering the course of system architect and then you would be appearing for the certification, right? So, so far, I would assume that you got an idea of broadly these levels, these roles, and within each role, you see the levels entry level, mid level, and high end, right? Same way, entry level SSA. So, the transition from system architect to entry level senior system architect is a bit tough. I would say, it's, people think it's quite easy, just get certified and everything will be done. But this is exactly where a developer has to carry out all the tasks on his or her own. Okay, so that means once the requirements are given, senior system architect should be able to understand the requirements, able to question or challenge the requirements and talk to the business. Communication with customer has to be efficient and written skills like you should be able to draft emails or question uh, on Jada or ADO or uh, tools that are available or able to understand the defects that has been raised on the application that is being implemented and then let's say design, solutioning, a lot of things. And senior system architects in Pega should be, should be up to date on each and every module of Pega. And all of those modules will be covered in this session, but that is theory. But anyways, you would have got hands-on when you're working as a system architect that should help the SSS over here. Okay. And uh, here, this exactly means, so moving from high-end SA to entry-level SSA, if within your company or within your circle, if you have some mentor, 
mentoring is always recommended. Whenever you're going from high-end system architect to an entry-level senior system architect, if a mentor is available, example, in your team already a quite experienced SSA is available. If that SSA is helping you move from high-end SSA to entry-level SSA, that will benefit you a lot. Okay, probably a pairing up of the candidates for a couple of months will help. I have, we have seen organizations doing this gracefully and this mentoring will go a long way because system architects are, you can say the pure developers, but moving to the senior system architects also needs an interfacing with the customers. If required, directly communicate with customers and able to translate the product capabilities to achieve the customer requirements. Okay, some of the projects usually sometimes might not be able to afford LSAs or they won't be having a lead system architect requirement. So some of the project runs with senior system, a pool of senior system architects and system architects as well, once they're into maintenance mode. Okay, so that's how some of the senior system architects become independent in the way how they work. But broadly, you can say most of the Pega projects will have lead system architect. One, most of the projects will have one, but if you're talking about an account which has many applications in place, usually each application can also have one LSA, and we also see some of the LSAs can be shared across the application. Depends on the customer and the setup that is in place. Okay, I would call in short LSA as brand ambassador of the product. LSA is the one who hears out all the functionalities of the business, who validates the requirement along with the business. When I say business, multiple people will be involved, maybe product owner, lead business analyst, business analyst, likewise. But overall, business. So lead system architect interacts with business to understand their requirements, participates in elaboration, refinement calls, to broadly categorize what is needed by customer and draws out the bigger picture uh, discussions like example to start with some architecture diagrams some key design documents high level design documents if required so th that's how it starts so whenever a project starts a lead system architect will be the person who initiates who will be part of the initial inception phases to draw uh, what is needed for customer it could be broadly the requirements and then to start with to estimate the development items that is needed and then when estimation is done and everything is planned then assume that all the delivery plan is in place the lead system architect will be leading a team consisting of senior system architects and system architects so only technically speaking let's say from technology perspective lead system architect is the one who is validating the requirements and ensuring that logicness of that requirements Okay. And whatever design is coming from SSAs, that is going to get approved by a lead system architect. And in most of the places, the design will be provided by lead system architect feature wise or sometimes maybe user story wise or sometimes epic wise. It depends. But overall, all in all, senior system architects will stay in close touch with lead system architects and uh, all the they can get all the help they want from their leads. And once lead confirms on the designs and the work that needs to be done for a particular sprint or uh, or on any set of tasks, once it is approved by LSA, then the work gets started and implementation will be done by SSAs and SAs. Yeah, simple. So in short, these are system architects are the junior developers who have hands-on and they'll be able to quickly configure things using Pega. And some of them, once they gain proficiency on hands-on on most of the module, then they're eligible for the high-end system architect. And from high-end system architect to move to the entry-level senior system architect, it's always recommended that they have some mentoring in place for at least a couple of months because that role transitioning is very important. With all the knowledge gained, then from entry-level, they move to the mid-level. And then finally, once they become expert over a period of time, maybe usually it takes at least two to three years to master the role of senior system architect. That's a bare minimum. And once the mastering is done on the senior system architect role, then to move to entry-level lead system architect role. This is, again, a tough phase for SSAs. And, uh, or I would say a crucial phase, not a tough one. Uh, because it's well defined and Pega PDN has a wide set of uh, courses to take a high level SSA to an entry level lead system architect. And there is a certification, the course available and the certification available. As of now, as of today's date, there are, there, it's a three step process overall. We're not covering that in the scope of this session, but overall, 
to become a lead system architect it's recommended that the uh, high end senior system architect should be covering the course of lead system architect and then clear the certification once the certification is cleared you can start picking up the role of lsa and once they start implementing things or maybe start contributing to the design discussions solutions estimations and there are many responsibilities out there once they start to get into that role then we can call them a mid level lsa like they'll be receiving a minimal support from the psa principal system architects uh, or maybe senior lead system architects who are in place we are not talking about that in this session but definitely they need some guidance but with minimal guidance if they are able to survive as a lead system architect we can still call them as mid level lsa but once they become the gain experience they start getting to deal with the customers and then able to implement and send the applications to go live uh, with a quality code and the applications are able to uh, applications are well maintained in production and they're able to run for few years in production but that gives the confidence for customers and in the pega eco space to trust that person as a lead system architect and this is like you can say like i said uh, most of the lead system architects are well known in the pega community and uh, yeah that, that's the pride of uh, this product and once you, uh, an individual masters this uh, lead system architect role then we can really call them as high end lead system architect okay most of the projects you can say like mm, any application you take you will have one high end lead system architect because customers trust high end lead system architect and slowly uh if there are uh, complex features which are involved of course there will be principal system architects which will be coming into the place but that is more like in practice you will see it but if you are starting your career as system architect i would say just uh, have a career path from system architect to lead system architect and set a defined path maybe let's say from entry to it's not like a standard to uh, do what i'm saying here but i'm just giving you an idea i have seen people doing like from entry level to mid it takes one year and then to high level sa it takes one more year and then one more year to entry level senior system architect likewise example 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 right over all like 8 to 9 steps it can take sometimes it could be 8 to 9 years for a system architect to become a lead system architect seen people who have become lead system architect in 5 to 6 years also that's exceptional uh, some people do really quite well and pick up things fast and gain experience and even customers get satisfied a lot with them then it's a great thing but normally in organic way how i have seen people doing it let us call them as exceptional or maybe organically exceptional i don't know how to call them but still minimum it takes uh, on an average 8 to 9 years for a person to reach from a system architect to a lead system architect and uh, this is how the career path would look like yeah and the important point to note out of this session is the points where these are mentioned this is exactly where mentoring is highly recommended if you are having some people associated with you in your company who can help you with this you just have to identify and start having those soundboarding sessions or whiteboarding sessions with them if you don't find the mentor at least start having some peer discussions with your teammates or someone who can join you and collaborate on that okay overall all in all i think uh, we covered broadly what are the certifications available what are the roles available what are the courses available and what are the certificates available in pega certifications available in pega and also from experience just we have seen that these are not broadly three categories it takes time to reach to the lead system or architect organically and uh, this is the split of how one can grow from a system architect to a lead system architect hope this session has helped you thank you and happy learning